Hello again, brethren. Um, third video that I'm going to be doing today, and um, this video is going to be kind of a expository video on Second Peter chapter two. Okay, we're going to go through the entire chapter of Second Peter chapter two and look at corresponding scriptures uh, within this chapter. Okay. Now, when it comes to the books of First and Second Peter, there comes questions of, well, are they written for the Jews, specifically for the time of Jacob's trouble, or are they pertinent for us today? What's the deal? First and foremost, we all know those of the Church of the Living God, the body of Christ, who rightly divide the word of truth. We know that the doctrines in the Pauline epistles is for us specifically today in this dispensation of time, the Gentiles. But when it comes to Hebrews and forward, sometimes there arises questions. For example, the book of Hebrews especially is for the Jewish people in the time of Jacob's trouble. Absolutely. Uh, also, I personally believe that the book of James is also very pertinent for the time of Jacob's trouble more so, because it, it is written unto the twelve tribes. But there again, like in Hebrews, as in James, as in First and Second Peter, there are things that cross dispensational lines. And when you find things that cross dispensational lines... That's a very important thing to note, because that means that if it's in one dispensation, and yet it is verified again in another dispensation, you have a clue that it is something that is an even keel throughout the entirety of Scripture. Now, personally, we I, I believe that both First and Second Peter um, is kind of a mix of both, that it is pertinent onto us today, but it will be a little bit more pertinent within the time of Jacob's trouble. Because you have to remember the audience that from Hebrews on is written to. Okay? Now, of course, there are many things within, especially First and Second Peter, that apply for us today. Yes, absolutely. But there are other things within uh, First and Second Peter that also are will be applicable during the time of Jacob's trouble, because you got to remember, especially when it comes to First uh, and Second Peter, Paul was the apostle unto the who? Yes, the Gentiles, and Peter was the apostle unto the who? The Jews. The circumcision, which is one of the reasons why Catholicism makes such a do about Peter, because Peter was the apostle unto the Jews, God's chosen people, the apple of God's eye, still to this day. Okay, we the Gentile have been grafted into the tree of the Jew to make the Jew jealous. This is we already know this. Okay, but one of the reasons, one of the many reasons why Catholicism elevates Peter as the first pope is because all of Catholicism is replacement theology. The coming great tribulation is not for the Jew, it's for the purification of the church. That's in the catechism. That's what the Catholic uh, Church teaches. Okay? It's about the church. The church has replaced Israel. That is what Catholicism teaches. Prove me wrong. But that's why Catholicism, one of the many reasons why Catholicism focuses on Peter. But yet, when it comes to what Peter wrote through the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost wrote through Peter, we should say, um, and the Lord is that spirit. Uh, 
uh, the Catholics don't follow even what their first pope wrote. It's very important to remember that. Very important to remember that. But with that said and out of the way, let us get into this. Okay. Now, if you have one of these things, you might want to use it in this one because we're going to be looking at quite a few corresponding scriptures. Okay. Now, let's begin. We're going to read this whole chapter in the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures. Get your scriptures and follow me along. Don't just sit there. Follow me along. Okay? Okay. We begin. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that, brought, that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Now very quickly, right away, let's note the difference between, but there were false prophets among the people, even as there shall be false teachers. Guess what? A prophet and a teacher are two different things. Okay? Two different things. A prophet can teach, and yes, even a teacher can prophesy. But there is a notable difference between prophets and teachers. You gotta remember, and I, and I addressed this in a later, in an earlier video of mine. Um, the First uh, John um, four one through six expository video. I addressed this. A prophet is someone who number one foretells the future events. Yes, but also when it comes to today in the Christian dispensation. Someone can prophesy, be a mouthpiece of the Lord through the scriptures. Okay? Okay? A prophet is one who tells of future events, but also is a mouthpiece of the Lord. And you can prophesy through the scriptures. Not for telling of future events, because what has been revealed in Scripture is what is going to be revealed. There is no new or added things onto the Scriptures. The canon of Scripture is complete, okay, given to us by the Lord, not the Roman Catholic Church, okay? Jesus Christ himself, our Lord, our God and Father, gave the canon with Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Okay? Okay? He gave the canon. So, and that also includes the Chronicles and whatnot. Okay? But our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, already gave the canon of the Old Testament. And the New Testament here we have, given to us by the Lord, not the Catholic Church. Okay? But what has been, what is in this book, the scriptures, King James scriptures, okay? It's complete. There's nothing to be added to or taken away. And someone can prophesy through the scriptures, okay? I addressed this in an, uh, in an earlier uh, video, which I might link in this one, okay? A prophet foretells of future events, but is also a mouthpiece of the Lord. A teacher teaches, not necessarily prophesies, okay? Note the difference there. Note the difference there. Let's continue. Verse 2. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Now, Acts chapter 20, verses 29 on to verse 31. Acts chapter 20, verses 29 on to verse 31. 
For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. So you see, Peter is kind of echoing what Paul um, says here in the book of Acts. Okay? So we know that there will be false prophets and false teachers, those who will want to draw uh, disciples after themselves and will bring upon themselves swift destruction who will privily bring in damnable heresies. And through covetousness shall they with vain words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Yeah. Yeah. And also now, Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30. Verses 8 on to verse 11. Isaiah chapter 30, verses 8 on to verse 11. Now go, write it before them in a table, and note it in a book that it may be for the time to come forever and ever, that this is a rebellious children, a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits, get you out of the way, turn aside out of the path, Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. And then when we go back here to 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 3, uh, verse 2 and 3, And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with vain words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Those of you false prophets and false teachers out there today, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. One day, you're going to give an account for your damnable heresies that you have taught people. Let's continue. Verse 4. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness, to be reserved unto judgment. Very quickly, Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28. Verse 41. Matthew chapter 28, verse 41. Whoops, I'm sorry, brethren. I'm sorry, I quoted the wrong thing. Beg your It was Matthew 25. <laughs> I can't even read my own writing. Matthew chapter 25. Verse 41. I beg your pardon for that, brethren. <laughs> Matthew chapter 25, verse 41. Okay, now let's read verse 4 again. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be, to be reserved unto judgment, 
Okay? Matthew chapter 25, verse 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Prepared for the devil and his angels. Guess what? Hell wasn't made for you. Hell was prepared for what? For who? The devil and his angels. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Now verses 5 on the verse 8. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an over overthrow, making them an ensample unto those that after should live ungodly. And delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them, in seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. So yes, Lot was considered righteous in the eyes of the Lord. Okay, now go to Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. Scripture with scripture, brethren. Luke 17, verses 26 on to verse 30. Okay? Luke chapter 17, verses 26 on to verse 30. And as it was in the days of Noe, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noe entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also as it was in the days of Lot. They did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven, and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Now, of course, Noah, Noe here, and Lot, Noah went into the ark, and then the Lord destroyed the world <laughs> with flood. Okay? Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, okay, were spared. Because they went into the ark. Lot was grabbed by the hand, basically, because he lingered. He initially went out with his wife and his two daughters, okay? But Lot's wife looked back behind her because she was yearning for what she was leaving behind when the angel said, Look not behind thee. And she became a pillar of salt. And we all know what happened with Lot and his two daughters. Don't we? In type, Noah and the flood, Lot being taken out of uh, Sodom before the Lord destroyed it with fire and brimstone. Okay? Those are types of the catching away, being taken out before the time of Jacob's trouble. Those are types. We see that God will take the righteous person out before he judges. Before his uh, judgment or wrath comes on something like that. Okay? That's what we see from the examples of uh, both Noe and Lot. Verse 9 on to verse 11 now. 
The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation, out of temptations, and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government. Presumptuous are they, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Whereas angels which are greater in power and might bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. Now, with that, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, we're going to look at one verse, okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. A lot of people like to take verse 13 here in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and say, well, God won't give us more than we can handle. And they will be thinking of this verse right here, when it's clearly talking about temptation. God will give you more than you can handle. So you have to go to him for his help, for his provision, for his guidance, for his mercy, for his grace. Yes, the Lord will give you plenty that you cannot handle. But when it comes to temptation, he will always give you a way to escape. It's just finding that way to escape that we got to be a little bit more um, um, vigilant about. Amen? <laughs> Verse 9 again, The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. Yes, yes. Ephesians chapter 5, Verse 6. Let no man, uh, Ephesians 5, verse 6, Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. And we're going to keep reading uh, till about verse 11, okay? Be not ye therefore partakers with them, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them, but rather reprove them. Look back at verse 6. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Again, children of disobedience is not referring to the church of the living God. You hear the gospel today, in this the time of the Gentiles, you hear the gospel today, you reject it, you are a child of disobedience, you are a child of wrath. Okay? Okay? You are a child of disobedience. It's not a church of the living God, a part of the church of the living God, the body of Christ, messed up and now he's a child of disobedience. It does not mean that. We just looked at the context of it. No. No. He's talking about a lost person. Verse 9 in 2 Peter chapter 2, The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government. Despise government. Presumptuous are they, self-willed. 
They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Okay? Whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not railing accusation against the Lord. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, verses 18 on to verse 22. Romans chapter 1. Verses 18 on to verse 22. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Hold your place there. And when you look back up uh, uh, at verse 2 here in 2 Peter chapter 2, And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness, in verse 3, shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Okay? Looking back at verse 10. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government. Presumptuous are they, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Go back to Romans chapter 1. Verse 18 now. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath shewed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. How can someone look at a leaf or look outside their door and think that all of a sudden Two things went boom, bang, and everything evolved from nothing. That that's crazy. That's crazy. That's that's insanity. That's insanity. Even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not. As God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. What happens when you reject the truth? You want to be deceived? You don't want to believe the truth? The Lord will, hey, the Lord will give you what you want. Professing themselves to be wise. They became fools. Back in Second Peter chapter two verse ten, but chiefly them that walk after the after the flesh and the lust of uncleanness and despise government. Presumptuous are they, self willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Verse eleven. Whereas angels which are greater in power and might bring not railing accusation against them. Oh, excuse me, before the Lord. Jude. Jude 9 and 10. Jude, that's the book right before the book of Revelation. Jude 9 and 10. Check this out. Jude 9 and 10. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. The Lord rebuke thee. You don't do this stuff like you see on the television if you watch these Catholic, Pentecatholic guys like Doplin and that. It's like, I rebuke you. In the name of Jesus. No. The Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. 
the Lord rebuke you. Verse 10. But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts. In those things they corrupt themselves. Brute beast, natural, unregenerate, natural man, living in the flesh. Now, one of uh, wanted us to look at that because whereas angels which are greater in power and might bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. Michael the archangel said the Lord rebuke thee, rebuke you to Satan, the devil. Satan is a very powerful angel. He really is. He's nothing in comparison to our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, but he is very powerful. He is. Look at what he's done on earth. Verse 12 now, on to verse 16. But these, as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of the things that they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption made made in a lot of the modern bible translations bible translations it doesn't say made to be taken and destroyed. It says born, giving credence to Calvinism. That there are some that have been chosen that are non-elect and others that are elect. See? See? It gives them cre it gives credence to Calvinism, which is not which is not of the Church of the Living God. But it says here, but these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed. Does that mean that God made them to be taken and destroyed? No, 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 no. Romans chapter 1 again, verses 28 on to verse 32, paying close attention to verse 12, or to verse, um, oh, well, yeah, that's for verse 12 here. But these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own destruction. Romans chapter 1, verses 28 now, on to verse 32. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Go back to Second Peter chapter 2, verse 12. But these as natural brute beasts. The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit, because they are foolishness unto him. Natural, unregenerate. You know, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Okay? Okay, hold your place here and go now to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Oh, excuse me. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. 
spiritually discern. And then when you look back here in Romans chapter 1, verse 28, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. First, uh, Second Peter chapter 2, verse 12, But these as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed. God didn't make them to be taken and destroyed. They did it themselves. Because they received not the love of the truth. Because they, it says right there, as natural brute beasts. And we just saw in Corinthians chapter 2. Let's let's go back there again. Okay. Okay. Because this one, this one right there is problematic for some people. First Corinthians chapter two, verse fourteen. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Okay? So when it says here in Second Peter chapter two, verse twelve made to be taken and destroyed it's not that the lord made them like that they did it to themselves because they're natural brute beasts not regenerated of the earth earthy natural men who can't receive the things of the spirit of god because they are foolishness unto them it's not that God made them like that. They did it themselves because they would not receive uh, the love of the truth. Okay? Now, continuing, continuing in Romans chapter 1, verses 29 now on verse 32. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate... Deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. But these, in uh, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 12, but these as natural beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. Natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, their own corruption. Their own corruption. It's not that the Lord made them to be that way. They did it to themselves. Comprende? Let's continue. And shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they that counted pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are, and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings, while they feast with you. Having eyes full of adultery, that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, and heart, have, and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children, which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray following the way of Balaam, the son of Besor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumb ass, that's a donkey, speaking with man's voice, forbade the madness of the prophet. Verses 17 on to verse 19. 
These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with the tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. Whilst they promised them liberty, they themselves are servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same as he brought into bondage. Jude, uh, Jude 4, now go back to Jude. Four on to sixteen. I know we just read nine and ten, but come on, Brad, fingers work with me. Jude four on to verse sixteen. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believe not, and the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains, under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Even, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Hold on one second, brethren. Likewise, also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. And then again, yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed not about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts, in those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam, for reward. And perish in the gainsaying of Korah. These are spots in your feasts of charity, when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars, so to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And in the book of Enoch also, that, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> beg your pardon, and Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. You see that a lot on YouTube. You want to get yourself some subscribers and views? Go ahead and get on the Let's Attack Brother Brian Denlinger train. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you want to get a lot of people saying, Amen, Amen, brother. Yeah. Attack Brother Brian. Make videos against him. Put his name in the title. Tag him so it comes up when you search for his stuff. Yeah. 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 
These are wells, and back in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 17, these are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. While they promised them liberty, they themselves are servants of corruption, of whom a man is overcome, of the same he is brought in bondage. Second Timothy 6, or 1 Timothy 6, beg your pardon. First Timothy 6, 3, on the verse 10. If any man teach otherwise, and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railing, evil surmising, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness from such withdraw thyself. Verse 19 in Second Peter chapter 2, While they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome, of the same he is brought into bondage. Back to Rome, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6, on to verse 10 now. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. <laughs> But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. And of course, for the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith, and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Verse 19 in 2 Peter chapter 2 again. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought into bondage. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, verses 16 on to verse 23. Romans chapter 6, verses 16, on to verse 23. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death, or of obedience unto righteousness? But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you, being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord.
So you see Paul echoing here something very similar, don't we? You see that? Yes? Now, verse 20 on the verse 22. For if, I have that circle, circle that in your scriptures. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Today is the first. Did you read Ecclesiastes chapter 1? Did you read the first proverb? Did you read the first chapter of Song of Songs? Hmm? Did you? Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Verses 14 on to verse 18. For if, circle if, after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verses 14 on to verse 18. I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. That which is crooked cannot be made straight, and that which is wanting cannot be numbered. I communed with mine own heart, saying, Lo, I am come to great estate, and have gotten more wisdom than all they that have been before me in Jerusalem. Yea, my heart had great experience of wisdom and knowledge, and I gave my heart to no wisdom and to no madness and folly. I perceive that this also is vexation of spirit. Look at that. Verse 17. And I gave my heart to no wisdom and to no madness and folly. I perceive that this also is vexation of spirit. And right here, verse 18. For in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. Back to Second Peter chapter 2, verse 20. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, they are in, again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Ecclesiastes 1, verse 18, For in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. The more you read the scriptures, the more you will learn of our Lord. And comparing yourself, your life out there, and comparing your thoughts and whatnot, according to the scriptures, you will quickly realize that you don't measure up at all. The more you know of yourself through the scriptures that you're scum, that you ain't good, that you're wretched, you're wicked, you're not good. The more sorrow it brings you. The more you know, the more sorrowful you become. And right here in verse 20, for if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, 
they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Verse 21. For it had been better for them to, for it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17. Twenty-two on the verse thirty-one. Acts chapter seventeen, verses twenty-two on the verse thirty-one. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, "Ye men of Athens." I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship. Him declare I unto you, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worship with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, if haply they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live, and move, and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. And the times of this ignorance, God winked at. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, and that he hath raised him from the dead. Ignorance is bliss, they like to say. And we see here in verse 30, And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. For it had, uh, Back in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 21, For it had been better for, that, for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it, to turn from the Holy Commandment delivered unto them. Yes. Again, Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Verse 18, For in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. But, verse 22, But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, The dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the soul that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Dog is a man. The sow is a woman. How do you know? The dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow 
that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Proverbs 26. Proverbs 26. Verse 11. As a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly. Verse 12. Seest thou a man wise in his own conceit? There is more hope of a fool than of him. Of course, what is a fool? The fool has said in his own heart, there is no God. And verse 22 again in uh, 2 Peter chapter 2. But it happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the soul that was washed in, washed to her wallowing in the mire. Romans chapter 6 again. Verses 1 on to verse 14. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if, when, for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lusts thereof. Brad, put your name after that. Neither yield ye your members to instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God, as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. But then, as we already have read, he describes that since we're under grace, that doesn't give us a go sin and do whatever because our, his grace covers it all. It's not what he's talking about. So we see here, brethren, sisters, that in 2 Peter chapter 2, there's a lot of stuff that is pertinent for us today as far as the falling away that is happening. Absolutely. Absolutely. And warnings about how God can deliver us from the temptations by giving us a way to escape. And in verse 9, and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. So. Well, 
this is this is something that I've been meaning to do for a while, and I have just now been got uh, had the time to go around, get around to get to it. Um, I hope uh, I hope that I hope that was uh, hope this has helped you a little bit. I um, hope uh, just pray that the Lord be glorified. I hope the Lord be glorified through this today. And um, thank you very much for watching this. If you if you do, brethren, um, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. And um, this will be, this is the third video that I have done today. And I'm going to uh, upload them in the way that I made them. So, um, thank you, brethren. Um, thank you very much. Praise be to the Lord. All glory go to him if any of you received anything out of any of these videos that I, Sinu, who is chief, has done. I do, Lord willing, have um, a video on marriage. Coming up here sometime very soon and also a video on the Catholic disloyalty teaching I want to address that but the Lord's will be done not mine and if any of you got anything out of this or anything praise be to the Lord so I love you thank you for watching if you do and um, we will see you in the next video Okay?